Hello YouTube, I am Lightly Salted and welcome back to the channel. And welcome back to our continuing re-evaluation of the tutorial series in U-Boat. In the last episode, we went over your beginning screen and the ins and outs of all the icons you can see. Today we are going to concentrate on your boat. Let's get to know your U-Boat. I'll be selecting the skipper here just so we can take a look at some stuff and scrolling into the boat. And we're going to start oh, at the bow. With our skipper selected, we can go ahead and take a look at ballast tank number 5. It is empty because, of course, we have not been diving and we haven't taken water aboard. It's important to know where this is because if you have to emergency blow your tanks, you may want to keep an eye on how much air is actually getting back into the tanks and bringing your boat back up to the surface. That will be shown as a value just here. Moving to the rear, we have the torpedo launchers. These are the forward. And we'll go ahead and right click to manage the torpedo loadout. As you can see here, your boat can carry eight slots worth of storage and four full tubes. The red color here and the green color here lets you know that this torpedo is being moved to this position. Something else to bear in mind, you can check torpedo stores in order to quickly take a glance to see which torpedo is warmest and which will expire soonest. And we'll take a look at that once we get to sea. As you can see here, you can interact with the bulkheads. This is extremely important when you want to close off sections when they are filling with water. You could simply have Mr. Watcher here walk over, right click, close. Mr. Watcher will now walk over to the door and close it for us. If we had a leak in this room, that would contain the water to this area. Conversely, if you wanted to evacuate the compartment, you would click this icon right here, this little green circle. We click that and everyone will run from the room, closing the door behind them. Perfect. We can reopen the room now. The lightning bolt icon will let you kill all power to that location. Like so. Moving aft, we have the main power distribution panel. This will not be lit up at the moment because main power is online. However, if we were to grab Mr. Watcher and using the top right icon, move into first person mode with him, leave his position. We can go have a look. Okay. And again, that is forward and sub, and this is your main power distribution panel. We can go ahead and turn off power to the bow torpedo room, just as we did outside the ship. And back on. Why it's important to know where this panel is, is if you took enough damage for your power systems to be knocked out, this is where that repair will have to be made. To the rear of that, we have the cabin cabinet. Go ahead and right click to open up the storage. And here we can see we can store certain items. By right clicking, we also now have access to the skipper's backpack and we could place items in his backpack. Moving aft, we have the listening room. This is where your radio operator will be running your hydrophone. Just across the way, we have the skipper's bunk. And again, closest to us, we have the radio room, where your radio officer will receive and send messages. After that, we have the control room, and you, we find the depth steers. If we were to right click on the depth steers, you would see that we can view details about it. Switch to manual steering, which comes in very, very handy to keep your boat quiet while sneaking up on targets. And improve depth keeping. This will allow you to improve the depth keeping. Just across the way here, we do not have it lit up, but there will be a cog icon very much like this one in this area once you have unlocked snorkel. This is your snorkel control area. Here we have the observation periscope. Only leader types may use it. The navigation station, very important if you don't want to get lost. And while it's not lit up, these are your valves for submerging and coming back to the surface. If we were running in the ocean at this time, I would be able to make the selection to dive right here at these valves. After that, we have the gyro compass. And of course you get a little blurb letting you know that this lowers your chance of getting lost by 60%. A very handy thing to have running when you do not have an officer on the navigation station. Something to bear in mind, the gyro compass takes both electric power and makes noise. Here we have our echo sounder, if we go ahead and right click. We can choose to ping deep, which has a limit of 1000 meters, or ping shallow, which will give you depth under keel to a maximum of 125 meters. 
To the rear of that, we have the pump. You will use the pump when your boat is filled with water. The pump will pump out all compartments. However, the farther away from the pump the water is, let's say it was all the way here in the bow, it will be less efficient at pumping out water in this area. If possible, when you're taking on water, try to have an officer move the water from this area to the control room where the pump is most effective. After that, we have our light switch. We can go ahead and choose between white, blue, and red lighting. White lighting pretty much has no function other than to let you see the interior of the boat. It will give you a plus 10% modifier during the day if you have it on, but realistically, it's not worth it. The blue lighting will let your crew know that it's time to run silent. It will also help you preserve oxygen. The red lighting will extend your sight at night. It will also brighten your screen, making it much easier for you to actually see when you're out sailing. After that, we have the crew quarters. This is where your officers can play cards to keep up morale. After that, we have the galley, and our storeroom is directly beside the galley, right here in this little square. Let's go ahead and open that up. And once again, we have storage, but for very different kinds of items, and I'll get into that at a later time. Note that by opening the storeroom, we can actually open the storage area all over the ship and move things to places they can go. For instance, we currently have fish and potatoes in the galley. If we wanted to add food to the galley, we could simply move it from here. Once the galley runs out of food, all the food available in the storeroom will not be eaten by the crew. They will not be able to actually gain access to it. In order to feed your crew, the food must be moved from the storeroom to the galley. After that, we have diesel engine room. Here on the far wall, you will find the ventilation controls. We can open it to put potassium absorbers in it, or we can simply turn it on. After that, we have the diesel engines. And moving further aft, we have the electric engines and accumulators. Further aft, we have the workshop, where one of your engineer-type officers can turn scrap metal into parts. Further aft, we have both the diesel and electric compressors. These work to recharge the air in your ballast tanks to drive you back to the surface. And finally, our aft torpedo launcher. Above the control room is your conning tower. In your conning tower, you will find the attack periscope. Outside of your conning tower, you will find the searchlight, the UZO targeting site, and your starter flak gun. On the forward deck of your ship, you will find the deck gun. Note that extra rounds can be stored by right-clicking here on the deck gun and placing them underneath the deck. As you can see here, all of these rounds are being stored at the deck gun itself, so as to save room in the storeroom. Now that we've introduced the ship to you, let's go ahead and try to interact with it. If you select an officer of a certain type, for instance, the skipper here is a leader type, he is able to use any item that requires sight. This includes the UZO targeting sight, the attack periscope, and the observation periscope. It also includes the deck gun and the flak gun. To have them use these things, you can simply click their icon here in the bottom right and either left click or right click to use it. A note on both the deck gun and the flat gun. You'll notice here in the upper right of your screen, we have this label of targets. We have hold fire, fire at ships, fire at aircraft. These are automatic functions. If you select one of these, the officer running the show, so to speak, will fire at the type of enemy you've designated. And they're not particularly good at it. We're going to go ahead and hold fire. We'll go down to the skipper here, into first person mode, and hit manual mode. And now we have full control over the flat gun. Right click for your aiming reticule, and left click to pull the trigger. In the bottom right of your screen, you will see that you can switch between armor piercing rounds and high explosive rounds by pressing the period or comma keys. To leave first person mode, pull back on your mouse wheel and back again. The deck gun works in the exact same fashion. 
let's have the skipper take a look at the targeting site. First person mode, manual mode. And here we have our targeting site. It will move very, very slowly back and forth using the WASD keys, but if you hold shift, it will go much faster. This particular observation point has two zooms. And the controls you see here on the left will be the same for your periscopes. We have the ability to change color filters. We are currently at default, darker, and lighter. We have our identification book, with which we identify the silhouette of the ship we are attacking. We have our statimeter tool, with which to dial in the distance of our target. We have our chronometer, by which to time the target and get their speed. We have the course tool, which will give you angle on bow calculation, and our torpedo loadout. Let's go ahead and take a look at the attack periscope. Once again, we go into first person mode and manual. You can raise and lower the periscope via this meter on the left. Your periscopes have three zoom modes. You also have several view modes. If you look at this little icon that sort of looks like an alien or a diving suit, we are in the default. Moving down one, we get a tighter view. And moving down another one gives us a more cinematic look. Identification book, statimeter, chronometer, course tool, and torpedo loadout are all the same. Provided you select the officer of the correct type, interacting with things in your boat is very simple, by either right or left clicking on them. However, this can be a little tedious and hard to do in the middle of a battle. Simply by holding the tab key, we can bring up almost every action we would ever want to take. We can turn on or off all of our ancillary equipment, switch our lighting, and have each officer perform specific tasks. Since we're tied up alongside, we'll take a quick look at the features of the dock. We'll grab our skipper, and we'll interact with the leading officer. The leading officer is where you go before and after patrols. You can get more orders, open the in-game tutorial, ask for a few favors which uses your reputation points to purchase certain bonuses. Take a vacation available once every seven days, perform research in headquarters, and say goodbye. I mentioned in the previous video that by speaking to the recruitment officer, we can go over the crew management, just like in the menu, or recruit sailors for our boat at a cost of 800 budget apiece. We also have the warehouse. Was brauchst du, Herr Kaloy? You can open the resupply menu to purchase or sell Schau items. Mal. And once you've completed research in HQ, you come here to upgrade your ship. By first selecting the I wish to upgrade my ship option, and then selecting the item you wish to upgrade. All right, folks, we're going to end the episode here. That was getting to know your boat, interacting with your boat, and learning a little bit about the features of the dock. Stay tuned to the tutorial series to learn more. Until next time, I have been Lightly Salted. Thanks for tuning in. Bye now.